now we are going to talk about the path of uh, the raw water and the path of the coolant in a typical marine engine, gas, or diesel. And uh, we are going to verify where it's possible that the coolant be mixed with the raw water. This is the seacock, and uh, this is the valve. Uh, we are going to open the valve, and then the water enter over there, pass through the strainer, the strainer is not over there, and enter in the heat exchanger. That's the heat exchanger. This is the heat exchanger. The salt water pass internally through the pipes, and, uh, and uh, the salt water pass directly over there, and in the other end, enter in this elbow, this is the anti-siphon device in, in the bottom. This is the water line. If the engine is located below the water line, this, this uh, elbow should be extended over the water line minimum 12 inches, according with ABYC. And after that, the salt water enter into the elbow of the exhaust. Exactly 12 inches over the water line, enter in the elbow of the exhaust. This is the point where the gases, the gases coming from the exhaust manifold and the salt water coming from the heat exchanger are together. Internally, in the heat exchanger and the exhaust manifold, is a metallic division here in this line. The gases are not mixed with the, with the salt water and, uh, of course, is not mixed with the coolant. The coolant is this serpentine. The coolant moves like this. The salt water pass straight, the salt water goes out to the anti-siphon device and enter in the elbow of the exhaust. This is the critical point. This is the point in consideration. When you install a marine engine, this line, this imaginary line, is the line that you need to take in consideration in order to consider that the engine is located below the water line or over the water line. If the engine is located over the water line, you can install a small hose between this point and this point. If the engine is located below the water line, you need to install this, this hose higher, passing one, uh, one, one feet over the level of the water line and returning into this elbow. This is the point where the water and the gases are mixing. For that reason, if during the cranking, this is exhaust gases, exhaust gases, exhaust gases. Those are the exhaust pores of, uh, of uh, the exhaust manifold. In front of those exhaust pores are the exhaust pores of the head. And of course, the exhaust valves are located in front of each pore. If one of the exhaust valves is not properly calibrated, what is the meaning of that? The last valve calibration is not according with the manufacturer specifications. Probably one of the exhaust valves stay open when the piston is going down during the intake stroke. During the intake stroke, those exhaust valves located in front of those ports should be closed. If one of those valves stay open during the cranking and, and you have here gases, gases and raw water, it's possible that, that in this piston, when the piston is going down and the exhaust valve stay a little open, suction the salt water and the salt water entering the combustion chamber. This is one of the three possibilities for salt water entering in the combustion chamber. Yes, it's during the cranking if the exhaust valves are not proper calibrated. Okay? And uh, this is the part of the salt water with gases mixed here in that point. And those are the exhaust ports. The exhaust ports with the exhaust valves over there. This is the exhaust manifold, you see? The exhaust manifold, the exhaust port, and internally is, is a metallic division. The gases never are mixed with the raw water or coolant on top. On top, you have a, the, the, the path of the coolant. You see the coolant enter here in the bottom, circulate, 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 circulate whoa, here, and return here into the engine. Here is the engine, the block of the engine, and this is the heat exchanger. On top, this small area is called the expansion tank. It's a metallic, and the, the, the pressure cap is located here. Okay, all right, those are the valves. Okay, this is the heat exchanger, that's the, exactly the, the expansion tank on top. Okay, that's the coolant pump. The coolant pump suction the coolant, suction the coolant from the block, 
send the coolant, send the coolant, pass through the heat exchanger, circulate through the heat exchanger, the coolant, and return and, and enter in the block if here the thermostat is open. If the thermostat is closing, uh, the, the coolant no pass. Depending of uh, if the thermostat is open or closed, the coolant enter in the block, circulate in the block and the head and return because the coolant pump move or circulate the coolant and once again enter in the heat exchanger. Yeah, if it's open, the coolant enter and once again the cycle continue, coolant circulate here, the coolant return, or the, the thermostat is closed, no pass until the temperature of the engine increase a little, open again, enter in the block, circulate, because the circulating pump circulate the coolant. Once again, my friend, in this area, in the heat exchanger, the coolant is cooled by raw water. A water is not in contact. The coolant never touch the salt water. Only if internally the heat exchanger is cracked, the coolant could be mixed with salt water or the salt water could be mixed with coolant. Uh, what is the symptom when the coolant is uh, mixed with salt water? Probably uh, in the reservoir tank located here, you have a feeding here with a hose, and this is the reservoir tank. In the plastic reservoir tank, you see that the color of the coolant, the refrigerant change, and you see a lot of calcium uh, in, the, in, the, in the cup of the expansion tank. But uh, in my videos, in the full video about this class, cooling systems, I explain with more details this short explanation.